Number 87. Using the periodic table, classify each of the following elements as a metal or a nonmetal, and then further classify each as a main group or a representative element, a transition metal, or an inner transition metal. Okie dokie. All right, so we have A through J. So we're just going to be basically finding where these elements are and then labeling them what they need to be labeled as. Now, I made this very, very easy for you guys because I colored it nice and pretty for you, but on the test or exam or quiz, right, your professor or teacher isn't going to give you this pretty uh, periodic table. So my suggestion is use this coloring and memorize the colors. So try to remember where the colors are in your head when you take a quiz or test, but it's, it's pretty easy. What I always start with is I always start with knowing where my metalloids are. My metalloids are always classified as a staircase. So you want to look at the staircase across the periodic table. And it always starts with boron. So now here, if you've seen here, there's a diagonal boron, silicon, arsenic, tellurium, acertine, right? That's classified as a staircase. It's just going down the stairs. And the staircase is, there's usually going to be like a thickened line right here on the periodic table. That's the staircase. Those elements, this whole diagonal here, and these two elements, germanium and antimony, are part of metalloids. If you can spot that out, you know where your metals and your nonmetals are. Anything to the left of this staircase is classified as metals, and the metals are in yellow. Anything to the right of the staircase is nonmetals. Now, there's one exception. The only nonmetal that's in the metal category is hydrogen. Memorize that. But there's no other exceptions. All the other ones to the left of the staircase are metals. Now, the difference between metals and nonmetals, metals are, you know, what we see all the time, right? They're shiny for the most part. So they're super shiny. They're great conductors of electricity and heat as opposed to nonmetals who are dull and they basically don't conduct electricity or very, very, very poorly. They conduct electricity and they produce pretty much no heat. Metalloids have both properties of metals and nonmetals. So we wouldn't say they're great conductors of electricity or heat, but we wouldn't also say that they, they you know, they suck, right? They're moder they produce electricity, conduct electricity and heat moderately well. They're like, eh, so-so. So they can be placed in the metal category and the non-metal category. They have both properties, hence they're classified as metalloids. Okay, so that takes care of that. Just memorize these colors. Uh, the second thing that I want to say is you're probably asking, well, what about these, right? These aren't even colored. What are these? At this moment in time, basically IUPAC, who is like the, uh, the standard of chemistry, they have not basically made these elements specific. There's, they need to do more experiments and such. So therefore they aren't categorized like all the other metals, nonmetals, and metalloids are. So they, they're not in their own specific categories as of yet, but as we progress in the future, I'm sure that that's going to change. All right. Now with that, I'm just going to erase this because now I just want you to know where your main groups are, your transition and your inner transition elements. Your main groups are Basically, if we think of the periodic table as like a skyscraper, right? And how many floors is how many blocks? The main groups are the huge skyscrapers. They're group one and two, and then 13 all the way to 18. So that's your main group or representative groups. So I'm just going to say MG over here, and then MG over here. The little ones from 3 all the way to 12, these are called your transition metals. So I'm just going to put transition M's. And then last but not least, if you're in these two groups, or these two periods, I should say, because they're going across and not really down, these are your 
inner transition metals. So inner transition, I'll just put inner trans M. And that's your three different categorizations here. So main groups are the tallest groups, one and two, and then 13 all the way to 18. Transition metals are three to 12, and then inner transition are the two periods on the bottom. Now, specifically, also I bring IUPAC back, specifically group 12 by IUPAC isn't classified as a transition metal group, but for basically all the textbooks, especially this one, they classified it, they classify it as a transition metal. So I'm just going to classify it as a transition metal. All right. So let's, let's move on. So let's do it. All right. So a uranium, uranium on the periodic table is U. So all you got to do is just spot out where these are and then classify them. So uranium is number 92, atomic number 92, which is down here. It's yellow. It's a metal. And then it's in the inner two periods all the way down. So it's an inner, I'll just put I, transition metal. That's it. A is done. Bromine. Bromine is BR. And bromine is all the way over here. It's in the blue category. It's to the right of the staircase, so it's got to be a nonmetal. And since it's one of those two parts that are the high skyscrapers, it's a main group. So I'll just put main group element. B's done. C, strontium. Strontium is SR. It's number 38. It's over here. So I'll just put strontium is SR. Now, memorizing these takes practice. I've been doing this for years. So it's basically muscle memory for me that I know that strontium is SR. But as you get more comfortable with the periodic table, you guys are going to be pros too. So SR is a metal because it's to the right of the staircase. And it's also part of group two. So it's a main group or representative element. That gets rid of that one. D, neon. Neon is N-E. It's over here, number 10. So neon is specifically a no, non-metal, and it's a main group because it's number 18. It's one of the big skyscrapers, so that gets rid of that one. Gold. Now, when I was um, memorizing my periodic tables, I had a hard time remembering which one was which, whether AG was gold or AU was gold. I always used to think that AG was gold because there was a G in here, but it's not. AG is silver. How I remember this as being gold is I would say, oh yeah, oh AU, right? Because everybody wants gold instead of silver. So, oh yeah, <laughs> corny, corny, I know, but it gets the job done. So, AU is gold. So now I'm just going to say that it's this guy, right? Number 79. And it's a metal, right? Because gold is, is shiny. And specifically, it's in from 3 to 12. So it's a transition metal. That's it. That was good. Now I'm going to go back over here. Um, Americium. So that's all the way down here. Number 95. So that's a, I'm just going to put AM, that's a metal. And it's a inner transition metal, because it's one of those two periods all the way down at the bottom. That checks this one out. Rhodium. Rhodium is over here, number 45, right? RH. Rhodium is a metal, and it's a transition metal because it's in group 3 to 12. It's group 9 specifically. So that gets rid of that one. Sulfur. I'll put this one on the right-hand side. Sulfur is number 16. Now, depending on where you are in the world, sulfur might be spelled different. Sulfur is sometimes spelled S-U-L-P-H-U-R, I believe. That's for my European fans. But for America or if you're an Americanized um, school... It will be the F S U L F E R, but it doesn't matter. It's still S, right? And sulfur is a non-metal. It's to the right of the staircase, and it's part of the big skyscraper. So, it's a main group or representative element. That gets rid of that one. Carbon. 
super important, especially for anything that's living, but you will love carbon, which is number six in organic chemistry. I especially love carbon. So carbon's number six. It's a non-metal. And it's to the right of the staircase. That's how I know it's a non-metal. And it's also a main group. So I'm just going to put MG. And then last but not least, potassium. Potassium is not P, right? A lot of students think that potassium is P, but it's not. Phosphorus is P. Potassium is K, and K is number 19. So that is a metal, because it's to the right of the staircase. Uh, sorry, to the left of the staircase. And it's also a main group or representative element. That's it. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to categorize the periodic table, which is super important. And if you've guys noticed, there's way more metals in this world than non-metals. But the non-metals are super important, especially for um, life. So memorize this categorization. Know where your main groups are, your transition and your inner transitions, and know where your metals, metalloids, and non-metals are. All right? Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you want more practice like this, I'll see you in the next question. It's just like this. So if you're on the playlist, I'll see you in three, two, one.